So uh, the State Academy of Art and Design at Stuttgart, um, with a student body of approximately 800 students, is an institution where fine arts and applied arts are taught side by side. The academ academy has a long history. In 2011, we will celebrate our 250th anniversary. It is the largest institution of its kind in the state of Baden-Württemberg and a prominent uh, institution in the Federal Republic of Germany. One of the academy's special characteristics is that it accommodates both fine art and applied arts under one roof. Located in the immediate neighborhood of the academy is the well-known and world-famous Weisenhof town. Uh, here you see an aerial view of the, uh, our academy with the different buildings with, where there's painting, photography, and also conservation of painting and archaeological goods. Here we have uh, ceramics, uh, sculpture, architecture, industrial design, and here uh, communication design and media conversation, conservation. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> located in the immediate neighborhood is, um, of the academy is the well-known and world-famous Weisenhof town. Built in uh, 1927, it is one of the best examples for the art of new architecture in Germany. Together with Mies van der Rohe, 17 architects from Germany, the Netherlands and France, for instance Le Corbusier, Mart Stam or Walter Gropius created an exemplary housing program for the modern urban living. The Stuttgart area is an extremely dense and rich landscape with a lot of well-known globally acting companies like Daimler Chrysler, Porsche or Robert Bosch company. It was also chosen by IBM, Howlett Packard and various telecommunication companies for the German headquarters. Stuttgart also has a long tradition of leading middle-class companies, which often are world leaders in their market segment. And last but not least, the region is famous for its wineries. Um, the State Academy offers 18 programs. The fine art core of these classes is represented by the fine art foundation course, as well as the fine art classes, including painting, graphic arts, and sculpture. These classes train art teachers and artists and exert a considerable influence on the applied art departments. The fine art departments do not subscribe to a certain single form of art or a single method of teaching. They offer a number of different artistic approaches. In the applied arts, architecture and design courses, the original focus on manual crafts has long been abandoned in favor of the demands of industrial production. The type of education provided at the Stuttgart State Academy differs from that of institutions specialized in the humanities or natural sciences. It is characterized by a more direct interaction with the teaching staff. staff. The outstanding quality and range of equipment available in the workshops allow students to acquire a wide variety of practical skills under the guidance of a workshop master. We have uh, 33 different workshops where you can work uh, uh, different techniques. Now I come to the history of the restoration department where I am a part of. In uh, 1922, the chemist Dr. Hans Wagner founded an Institute for Color Technique, which was a research laboratory for color chemistry and painting techniques. And this served as a support for the artists, its uh, painterly techniques. And this tradition of a technological support for artists is until now a part of our tradition, and it was carried on also after the Second World War. The famous painting technician Kurt Welte founded the Institute of Painting Technology. Um, in 1945. In 1963, Rolf Straub became the follower of Kurt Welte. Soon, Kurt Welte not only gave technical supports uh, to artists, but he began with his students also to work on the conservation problems of paintings, sculptures, and mural paintings. 
Out of his teaching, a first important generation of conservators evolved who proved themselves in museums and in the preservation of historic buildings and monuments. Most of the leading German conservators from the 60s to the 80s were trained in this institute. One of them was Rolf F. Straub. After his academic years in Stuttgart, he went to the Courthout Institute of Art in London, where he became a close friend to Stephen Rees Jones. He worked as a conservator in Dublin and Barcelona. Rolf Straub later became director of the technology department of the Swiss Institute for Art History in Zurich. In 1963, the internationally renowned scientist returned to our art academy as the successor of Kurt Weilte. Only in the year 1977, the first academic program in conservation and restoration of painting and polychrome wooden sculpture was established as a regular study program. In 1988, a second study course concerning the conservation and restoration of archaeological, ethnological, and craft objects followed. In 1991, the third study course concerning the conservation and restoration of graphic, archival, and library materials was established. This study course was then followed in 2003 by a program for the conservation and restoration of murals and polychrome stone. In October 2006, we started our fifth program for the conservation of new media and digital information. For this new course, the first concept has been developed in the spring of 2001 by Gerhard Barnick, head of the program for graphic archival and library material, and the photographic engineer Klaus Pollmeier. The program should cover the conservation of photographs, video recordings, and digital information. The main areas or institutional fields we were targeting or addressing at from our personal experience and our existing networks were archives, libraries, and museums. During the development of this curriculum, we were always concerned to cover all these important institutional fields in our classes. Finally, in August 2004, after a long period of negotiations with the State Ministry of Science and Art, it was agreed that the study program, Conservation of New Media and Digital Information, would be established as the fifth column in the porticus of our conservation programs. However, with temporary financial means until April 2010, then the program will be evaluated and if it has proven to be successful, it shall be carried on further. I now come <clears throat> to the students and show you some impressions of teaching situation. We are very broadly interested in the biographies, interests, and capacities of our students. Generally speaking, the applications which we receive are extremely interesting. One student has a professional background in archaeology. She participated as an excavation assistant in the excavations at Selinunt in Sicily. She has worked in Rome at the famous and internationally renowned German Archaeological Institute, where she was responsible for registering findings, documents, and photographs of the excavation into a database. Out of this work, she came herself to the question how to preserve these digital recordings in a long-term strategy. She has now quitted her well-paid job in Rome and came to Stuttgart to study with us. <clears throat> Another very interesting person worked as an IT consultant at Howlett Packard in Stuttgart for over 20 years. He has developed and designed research programs and projects for Howlett Packard after studying aerospace engineering. He also quitted his job at Howlett Packard for the benefit of the new program. <laughs> One student is a conceptual artist and photographer. He studied conceptual art with Joseph Kosuth at the Munich Art Academy. Two other students graduated in media engineering with a craftsman background as a carpenter and a pastry cook. <laughs> One student comes from Tel Aviv, Israel. She has studied film and TV production and has worked as a production assistant in Israeli television. These astonishing broad and different biographic backgrounds 
are very much appreciated because those students bring along already certain knowledges and capacities and capabilities. Fellow students and faculty both consider these precious assets since they allow for broad perspectives in the classes and intelligent target-oriented problem-solving strategies. Let me just say a word about our faculty and lecturers. The interesting thing is quite uh, is that quite a lot of us are self-educated in the field we teach because until today there was no academic education in these fields available. As a consequence of this extraordinary situation, it is not only important that the students learn from us, but also that we learn from each other. Everybody knows that our knowledge is fragmentary and partial. Speaking with Socrates, the Greek philosopher, we might say, we know that we don't know. Out of these thoughts, we decided to develop a structure that also allows the docents to learn from each other. We decided that all classes will be open to our docents if they want to participate in the learning process. Another project will be what I have called the Stuttgart Source Book of Media Conservation, for which each docent is asked to provide an introductory article on this topic. This article should be written in a language which is understandable also to laymen and should contain an overview on the state of research, the different methodologies used or applied, if possible a discussion of an example or a case study and how it has been solved and a commented bibliography of printed and online resources. Now I would like to turn to the curriculum but I fear that my presentation will not allow this until the last image has been shown. Yeah. <laughs> That's if you optimize the presentation. So, okay, to the curriculum. The, the, the uh, image will be shown shortly. The curriculum was mostly developed by the photographic engineer Klaus Pollmeier, which I already mentioned, with additional comments from the colleagues of our department. It is divided into four semesters, and since it is a graduate program, it will provide a master's of art degree. Admission requires that applicants have a university degree, like a bachelor of art or equivalent degree. The program's concept is targeted towards an international community, and it requires English and German language skills. The first two semesters are dedicated to a broad and general teaching of the basics of media conservation and media technology. The four main areas of teaching or modules are conservation, technology and media, informatics and liberal arts. The first conservation module contains classes on documentation, preventive conservation, the history of conservation, and informational resources. These classes are required subjects. From the next three modules, named Technology and Media, with one module each for photography, for video, and for digital information, two must be selected as a whole. In these modules, the technical foundations and the cultural history of the respective media systems are taught. The following module is the informatics module, which is elective depending on the personal background knowledge of the students. It is devised into basic and practical informatics. It is concerned with database development with HTML and XML as an extended markup language. In the second semester, you see a similar structure where the courses go on. You have also this documentation through uh, preventive conservation and you have a discussion on projects and standards and in photo you have photo conservation, image processing and applied photography. In video conservation you have the problem of video, video digitization and of hardware technology and maintenance and it's also embedded with uh, media history uh, which we understand as a combination of the history of technology 
and uh, the history of the cultural uh, history. And uh, in digital information, we discuss methods of long-term preservation, data management, distribution, storage technologies. And also in the liberal studies, you have uh, courses like communication, presentation, rhetoric, law. It's very important for us, the legal issues of all what you are doing in conservation. Then history of media art, also philosophy and ethics, culture and exhibition management, and marketing and fundraising. Our game is uh, not to develop a practical restorer, but more uh, to go into the direction of preservation management. We are heading at a person which is able to talk with the directors of an institution, maybe a museum, an archive, or a library, what has to be done in order to long-term preserve the collections and then to uh, make the right decisions to go on with these practical things. So, um, in the, the third and fourth semester, the third semester is mainly dedicated to a supervised conversation project in two of the three fields, in photography, video, or digital information. Um, additionally, between the second and the third, or between the third and the fourth semester, there is an internship with a total duration of two months in an archive, a library, or a museum, or a company. This internship is supposed to lead the students into their first ideas and concepts for specific conversation, uh, conservation projects, sorry, uh, to be realized under supervision of our docents and cooperating institutions. Additionally, some few required or elective classes on informatics, project management, and futurology are offered. Uh, we have included futurology because we think it's very important to think into the future, what will be in 10 years, or what can society predict now for uh, certain states of society in 10 or 20 years. So we will try it and we will see if we end up in a mystic... Um, esoteric <laughs> debates <laughs> of it will be fruitful. It's an experiment. Uh, the last and uh, fourth semester is dedicated to a thesis project which ideally derives from the conservation project of the third semester. It summarizes the theoretical and practical experiences and knowledges for, of the previous semesters. Now I would like to say a little bit about our corporations. From the very first beginning on, we have focused on a very close relationship and a network to various institutions which are interested in our work. One of our first and most important corporation partners is the ZKM, the Center for Art and Media Technology at Karlsruhe, under the direction of Peter Weibel. We will have a cooperation contract with this unique institution concerning the teaching of theory and practice of video restoration by the video restorer Christoph Blase, about internships, conservation projects we do in common, and the mutual share of knowledge and know-how. Another very important cooperation is being developed with the Nash German National Library in Frankfurt. Um, its director, Ute Schwens, is among our teaching staff. There are also very close connections to the state archives of Baden-Württemberg and several private companies which are located in the Stuttgart area. In this semester, we also start a new cooperation with the Staatsgalerie Stuttgart and the Württembergische Kunstverein. This cooperation will allow our students to participate in the organization of a big retrospective exhibition of the works of the internationally known Canadian media artist Stan Douglas. <laughs> uh, the show will take place in the fall of 2007 and will present 14 media installations in two houses. We will accompany this exhibition from the very beginning to the very end from our perspective of media preservation. Now a last word to the outlook. I this is a work of art we own in our 
Art Academy. It is by Namjoon Paik. It is called Two-Way Communication from 1986. And it is an interactive video computer-based multi-monitor installation. As you can see, already 11 monitors do not function at the moment. So one of our first uh, conservation projects will be to document and to uh, conserve this uh, precious work of art and to fix uh, the, uh, the monitors. We do not function anymore. Uh, otherwise, our future perspectives concern us quite a lot. Professional education within a graduate program may only be one of our future objectives. Continuing education for professionals in the field, scientific research, which in a, a FID program, which we already have, we are one of the few art academies in Germany which have a separate FID program also for restorers and conservators. It is possible that conservators can re receive a FID in um, art history. And networking and providing guidance during decision making. So, um, uh, we are also interested in sharing our knowledge uh, with uh, the Daniel Langlois Foundation, also with the McGill University, because I think uh, only shared knowledge is knowledge. A knowledge which is not shared is not knowledge, but it is a secret. And so I think uh, a lot will depend on this uh, notion of sharing. So I feel at the present moment, uh, I feel a little bit like Alexander of von Humboldt, the famous uh, uh, scientist, going up the Amazon River, not knowing where we will r arrive and what experiences we will face during our journey. But the boat is ready, students and staff are on board, fuel and food have been loaded, and our journey into the unknown has just begun. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>